Types of immunity. Active immunity. And passive immunity. What is acquired immunity? Acquired immunity, also known as adaptive immunity, is the ability of the body's immune system to develop protection against a specific pathogen or antigen after exposure. This type of immunity is not present at birth, but develops over time through exposure to diseases. What are the types of acquired immunity? Acquired immunity has two main types. Active immunity. When our own immune system protects us from a pathogen. Passive immunity. When we are protected from a pathogen by immunity gained from outside sources. We will discuss them one by one. Active immunity. Active immunity develops when the body's immune system is stimulated to produce its own antibodies against a specific pathogen, either through natural infection or vaccination. It arises when our own immune system produces antibodies to fight off a specific pathogen, thus leading to long-term protection. Types of active immunity. It occurs in two forms. Naturally acquired active immunity. This occurs when an individual is exposed to a pathogen and their immune system develops a response, thus producing antibodies and memory cells to fight the infection and provide future immunity. Artificially acquired active immunity. This is achieved through vaccination, where a weakened or inactive pathogen in the form of a vaccine is introduced to the body, thus stimulating an immune response against the components of the vaccine without causing the disease. What is the mechanism of active immunity? It involves the following steps. Exposure to a pathogen. When the body encounters a pathogen, such as a virus or bacteria, it recognizes the pathogen's antigens. Antibody production. The immune system then produces antibodies, which are specialized proteins that bind to the specific antigens and help neutralize or eliminate the pathogen. Memory cells. Along with antibodies, the immune system also creates memory cells, which remember the pathogen's antigens. These memory cells can quickly produce more antibodies if the body is exposed to the same pathogen again in the future, thus leading to long-lasting immunity against the disease. What are the key characteristics of active immunity? Specific. Unlike innate immunity, it is highly specific. It provides protection against a specific pathogen, that the immune system has learned to recognize. Requires time. It takes time for the immune system to produce antibodies against that pathogen, so active immunity doesn't provide immediate protection. It needs time to develop. Long-lasting. Active immunity can last for many years or even a lifetime, depending on the disease and the individual. Examples of active immunity. Vaccination. An example of active immunity is getting vaccinated against a disease, like COVID-19. This type of immunity develops when the immune system is exposed to a pathogen in a vaccine and learns to recognize and fight it by producing antibodies. Natural infection. When you're exposed to a disease, your immune system learns to recognize the pathogen and fight it off by producing antibodies and memory cells that can provide future protection. For example, after recovering from chickenpox, most people develop lifelong immunity. The second type of immunity is passive immunity. Passive immunity is achieved by receiving pre-made antibodies from an external source, rather than the body producing them itself. It refers to protection from a disease, acquired through the transfer of antibodies from another source, rather than the recipient's own immune system producing them. This type of immunity is immediate but short-lived, typically lasting a few weeks or months. What are the types of passive immunity? It occurs in two forms. Naturally acquired passive immunity. This happens when a baby receives antibodies from their mother through two sources. Placenta. IgG antibodies pass from the mother to the fetus through the placenta during pregnancy, providing some protection to the baby against certain diseases. Breast milk. Breast milk, especially colostrum, contains IgA antibodies that protect the infant's gut and respiratory system from infections. Artificially acquired passive immunity. This involves receiving preformed antibodies from an external source, such as an injection of antibodies or a transfusion of blood products containing antibodies. What are the key characteristics of passive immunity? Transfer of antibodies. 
the recipient does not produce the antibodies themselves. Instead, they receive them directly from an external source. Immediate protection. Since it involves receiving pre-made antibodies, it provides rapid defense against pathogens or toxins. Short-lived. Passive immunity does not last as long as active immunity because the received antibodies die after completing their lifespan. No memory cells. Unlike active immunity, passive immunity does not create memory cells that can provide long-term protection against future infections. Examples of passive immunity. Natural passive immunity. This occurs naturally when a baby receives antibodies from its mother's blood. Through the placenta during pregnancy and also through breast milk, especially colostrum. These antibodies help protect the baby from various diseases before its own immune system is fully developed. Artificial passive immunity. This involves receiving antibodies from an external source, such as an injection of immune globulin. This is often used when immediate protection against a specific disease is needed, like after exposure to rabies or certain viruses. In essence, Passive immunity provides ready-made antibodies to fight off pathogens or toxins without the body having to produce them itself. This immunity is temporary, as the body doesn't retain memory of the specific antigen. Conclusion In summary, our immune system protects us through two vital approaches. Active immunity, where our body learns and remembers how to fight specific pathogens. And Passive immunity, where we're given temporary protection through external antibodies. Both types play a critical role in our defense against disease.